How do you become a structural engineer? Hi, I'm Matt and I'm a structural engineer. I'm gonna be talking about eight things that you can do to become a structural engineer. Number one, go to a Cal Poly school. Now, I know this is pretty specific to California and the West Coast, but the best thing that you can do for your career is go to a school that's practical, and then as you go to undergrad, then you can get into the more theoretical aspects of things because you're at a slight disadvantage if you just go to a school that's theoretical for undergrad and, and then theoretical for your grad school. You'll notice a lot of other schools will have professors, but they haven't worked in the industry. They don't have their PE license. They're pretty much working off of uh, pretty much a lot of, of theory. But if you go to a Cal Poly Pomona, such as I did, or if you go to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, a lot of the professors I think it's even required that they have professional experience. So the things that they're teaching you is pretty much how they design things in the industry for the most part. And it's a lot more practical than going to schools that have curriculums that are pretty much just theory. But if you can't go to those schools, I mean, try to go into the best school that has the best structural engineering program that you can get into. And if you're already in school, don't worry about it. I mean, it's going to be a lot more important on where you go to grad school than where you went to undergrad, at least in California. Number two, get involved early with your school's civil and structural engineering organizations. These can be ASCE or your structural engineering organization that whatever's in your area. For me, it was CIOSC. And get involved as early as you can. For me, that's something I wish I would have done. I joined pretty late but I would have gotten a lot more out of it if I joined earlier. And don't just join and just say that you're a member because you can, that's something you can put on your resume. You're not gonna get anything out of that. What you have to do is you have to get involved. Be active in the committees, actually become part of the teams. For example, you can be a team captain for let's say Steel Bridge or a seismic design competition, or you can be a secretary or treasurer or president uh, become a leader in those organizations. Matt, why do I need to join these teams? Can I just have a high GPA? Yeah, you could. You don't necessarily need to join these, but you have to know that a lot of other students are gonna have high GPAs too. What's going to separate you from them? And by getting involved in these student organizations that are related to civil and structural, it shows that you're committed to your career and it's you're not just dabbling. It's something that you're interested in, that you're you know, really want to put your whole career into, let's say you're interviewing for a company, it's easy to say that, hey, I'm interested in structural engineering. It's a lot better and a lot stronger to show that you're interested in structural engineering. Let's say that you led or you were a team captain for your seismic design competition team. That shows that, hey, you have leadership potential, you can work with others, and you're more than interested, more than just interested in structural engineering. That's something that you're passionate about and that you can get really get into. Number three, do good work for your structural engineering professors. Why do you need to do this? Well, you're going to need their help eventually when you get into grad school or when you're gonna get an internship. It's going to be really helpful if you can just ask them for a letter of recommendation when you need it. But Matt, I'm shy and I'm awkward and I, I don't wanna to get to know my professors, they're weird. You know what's even weirder? asking your professor for a letter of recommendation and he doesn't even know your name. Don't get me wrong, I was shy too and you know I didn't really want to get to know my professors or stand out in class or raise my hand, but that's some of the things that you can do to, to ease you into that. So for me, if I knew this was a professor that you know I really wanted to get their le letter of recommendation, I mean, I'd do good work for them first. I'd raise my hand during class, I'd show up to office hours and ask good questions during office hours. If there were advisors for a student competition that I was in, you know, I'd go to their office hours and ask for their help on, on those types of projects too. Or if you have them for a senior project, go above and beyond. Make them look good by doing good work. So if you're the type that doesn't want to get all buddy-buddy with your professors, I know I really wasn't. The easiest thing that you can do is do good work and make sure they know you are doing good work. Make sure they know your name and that you do well in their classes. So just imagine if you don't do any of this and you ask your professor for a letter of recommendation. Think of the situation you're putting him in. You show them that you gotta be in their class. It's gonna be a pretty crappy letter of recommendation. Versus you did this for them, you did this for them, and you did this for them. Then they have a lot more to go off on and they can write you a much better letter of recommendation for when you need it because they want you to succeed. 
but if they don't know you, they can't help you. Number four, get scholarships. This might seem pretty obvious, but I mean, a lot of students don't even apply for scholarships and a lot of organizations are just begging for students to apply to their scholarships. They want to give you money. But I noticed that a lot of students when I was still in school, you know, they were still kind of, uh, too much work. Oh, I need a letter of recommendation. I don't know any of my professors. So make sure to apply to those. And if you're even a part of your student organizations, then that's gonna make you even more eligible for these. It's something that you can just put on your resume that helps you stand out. Number five, get internships. If you're still a civil or structural engineering student, this is the number one thing that you should strive to get. This not only lets you know what the industry is actually like and if you're actually gonna like the work that you're gonna be doing, but it drastically increases your chances of getting a job after you graduate. Again, this is something that I wish I would have started a lot earlier in my career because it was really tough for me to just even get my first internship. And I'll do a video later and to get more in depth on how to actually increase your chances of getting an uh, engineering internship. But if you're just starting out, a quick tip that for me was start small. For me, I'd just look up local engineering companies, structural, construction, um, those are the best two industries that you can get into. And I just email the, the principals, the, the CEOs of the firm, the, the founders of the firm directly because their company was so small that I could just go straight to the decision maker. And I just asked them if they were looking for an internship, whether their website said they had one or not. I remember sending about 30 plus letters and I got about three interviews out of that, which was pretty good. Like I said before, it'd be preferable to get a structural engineering internship, but if you can't, I would definitely go for a construction type of internship, just so you know how things are built. That's really gonna help you out in the industry. And if you can't get that, I mean, you gotta start somewhere. I mean, go with, go apply for city jobs, go apply for geotech, civil, hydrology. I mean, I would just get any type of experience, any type of civil engineering experience helps. And then the next time you can keep trying for that structural engineering in internship. Number six, take your FE exam. I mean, back in my day, it used to be called the EIT, the engineering training, and it used to be a paper exam. But anyways, make sure to take that test, take that exam while you're still in school. Don't wait until you after you graduate. You'll probably be taking this in your third year or maybe your fourth year. Number seven, do good work on your senior project and pick a senior project that's as relatable to the industry as possible. The senior project's important because it's something that you can present during your, your interview. It's pretty much your portfolio of what you can do. And the more relatable it is to the structural engineering industry, the better your chances are of getting accepted. So if you have any senior projects that are design related, I would strongly recommend getting into those and doing really good work on those, go above and beyond on those because that's something that you can use for your portfolio. Number eight, go to a good graduate school program. In my opinion and what I've kind of seen in the industry, at least in California, is it matters a lot more where you go to grad school than where you go to undergrad. So this is when all those steps come together you built those relationships with your professors, they can recommend you, you've gotten your internships, you've shown that you're more than interested, you're committed to structural engineering by being a team captain for an engineering design team or by being a vice president for one of your organizations. And of course, nothing can replace a good GPA, so I didn't mention that as one of the points because it should be pretty obvious. I mean, the higher the GPA is, the better your chances are. But even if your GPA is not the highest, Mine wasn't, I was like a you know, 3.3. I was still able to get into a good grad school. If you wanna know more about grad school and if you need to go and where you should go, I've actually made a video on that and I'll link it in the description below. And when you're in grad school, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Depending on what program you're in, most of them you can probably do about a year, year and a half maybe. A lot of them are pretty quick if you want to go into the structural engineering industry. So you might not have to go all crazy with um, the school organizations, but definitely build those relationships with your professors, the ones that are really in tune with the industry. Matt, are you saying I have to do all of that to become a structural engineer? Look, I'm not saying that you have to do each and every one of these to become a structural engineer. 
even if you do all of them, there's still no guarantee that you're gonna be a structural engineer. It's just gonna improve your chances. Like it or not, finding that first structural engineering job or that internship, it's a competition. You're not just competing with your classmates from your school, you're pretty much competing against um, everyone in your area and even some people that are out of your area. What are you going to do to stand out? Anyone can have a pretty good or high GPA, but what's gonna separate you from everyone else? So all these things I'm saying, they're gonna help you stand out. They're gonna help you land that first internship, land that first position a lot easier than it is for someone that hasn't done all these things. So do what's hard now, then your life's gonna be easy. If you do what's easy now, then your life's gonna be hard. So make sure to comment below if you think I'm missing anything or if you have your own thoughts on what you think you need to do to become a structural engineer. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss any videos.